Good evening and welcome to it. This is the Private Property Podcast, where we provide you with valuable knowledge and information on all things property related. Whether you're a first time home buyer, a seasoned investor, or you're just looking for some expert advice, we have got you covered. Tune in every Tuesday and every Thursday at 7 p.m. for tips, insights, and expert advice on burning topics related to property, because this podcast is brought to you proudly by Private Property. Remember, you can find your new home on privateproperty.co.za. Welcome to it. This is the Private Property Podcast. On tonight's episode, we're finding out how we can help families with the winding up of a deceased person's estate. Joining me in studio to discuss this inter- interesting and very necessary topic is Anelda Kutsia, who's the National Manager of Insolvent and Deceased Estates, Retail Collections and Recoveries at APSA Bank. But before we dive into the conversation, please remember to comment below, share your thoughts about today's episode. You can join the conversation by using the hashtag, hashtag find your new home on privateproperty.co.za and hashtag the private property podcast on all social media. We'll be keeping an eye out for your posts and we may even feature some of your comments on the show. Because this podcast is brought to you proudly by Private Property and this is where we provide you with all of the information that you need to do with all things property related. Like I said before, joined in studio by Absa's Anelda Kutsia. Welcome to the Private Property Podcast. How are you? Good in you. Thank you for having me, Sips. Absolutely. So we're talking about wrapping up deceased estates in particular and how that pertains to property. Um, look, I mean, it's not easy winding down a deceased estate. A lot of people are in distress, you know. It could be a close family member usually and just losing someone is a very traumatic event. So obviously when it now comes to winding down said estate, dividing things up, looking for wills, do they exist, do they not exist, did they have secret children no one knew about (laughs) and only found out about at the funeral, it becomes a very sort of loaded time. So what would you say is the key thing that families need to know when someone has now passed? So losing a loved one is a highly emotive and traumatic experience. Mourning the loss of a loved one whilst you have to sort out their affairs can be extremely overwhelming for a family. What we often regrettably see as a bank is that a family doesn't know where to start. Who do I need to notify? Who do I need to report the estate to? And what will happen with the assets within the estate? Mm. But there's a couple of things that a family can do once a loved one has passed on. Uh, a couple of important things. Firstly, notify the relevant parties. So these relevant parties include service providers as well as financial institutions. So it's really important to notify them where the deceased held accounts. Mm. So that's the first one. The second one is the estate needs to be reported. Mm. So by law, an estate needs to be reported to the master of the high court. The master of the high court will then in turn appoint an executor or a master representative who needs to wrap up the estate or administer the estate. And although you're telling me, uh, I'll use my dad as an example because he's gone already, so it doesn't matter, he's already dead. Now this guy dies. Now, are you telling me in the next hour I need to be phoning Foshini and be saying, Hi, Foshini, it's me, Sibs. My dad is dead, crying on the phone because now I need to notify the relevant stakeholders. No, as soon we understand, you know, you need to go through the mourning period. Mm. So you firstly, as soon as you are comfortable, um, then you need to reach out to those relevant parties. It doesn't have to be an hour after, really, as soon as you are comfortable. So um, maybe a year even. A year, not so much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are the timelines we're looking at? What's so the average? By, by law, in terms of the law, an estate needs to be reported within 14 days after the death. Um, so it is important, you know, as soon as you can to really go and notify these parties. Yeah, there's a couple of other things as well that needs to be done. You need to notify insurers where there is a policy that is payable to a beneficiary. Mm. I think it's really important to, to do that. Um, and then, you know, what we've also done is we've created or developed a deceased guide. And the deceased guide really contains useful steps specifically aimed at the spouse or the next of kin. Mm. It contains useful steps in terms of who do you need to notify when a loved one passed on? What is the process within deceased estates? As well as, you know, what 
the, the frequently asked questions relating to a home loan when a loved one do pass on, which can be found on our website. Okay, so we'll get to the property aspect soon, but one would assume that a deceased person would have had some kind of will or estate planning in place where now the property would have been part of that situation in terms of who it should go to or who must pay it off, who must inherit, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe they have a secret house in the Maldives, but then they only want to give it to the secret girlfriend, but not the wife. I don't know. So why is it important to have these things in place? It is important to have a will. So each and every person who either have assets, who have minor children, uh, who is married or even have pets should have a will in place. So we do recommend, you know, that you consult with a financial advisor or an attorney to draw up a will, a valid will, um, to ensure, you know, that your wishes are taken care of when you do pass on. With that as well, you know, will is important to be drawn up so that you can make a decision whilst you are still alive, what needs to happen with my assets when I pass on? Who do I want my assets to go to when I pass on? Mm. Who needs to take care of my children when I pass on? How will my debt be settled when I pass on, if you have any debt? Mm. As well as who will be my nominated executor who has the responsibility to ensure, you know, that your estate is administered and that your wishes are fulfilled in line with your will. So that is really important. Mm. Um, with that as well, with a will, it's really important to update your will relevant to your life events. Our life events change. Mm. So if you if you have any children, um, update your will. It might be, you know, that you're going through a divorce, make sure with that life event that your will is also updated. Might be that your beneficiary that you've nominated where sh some inheritance should take place mm. um, passes on. So with that life event, you need to update it. Or they stop speaking to you for six months. Then you're yes. like, well, you're not going to get my money anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. So for all of those life events, it's really important that you do update your will. I want to go back to now this this will section, right? And the you said you must go to the master of the high court. The master will then appoint an executor. Can you speak more to that? What is an executor? What is their role? Who should it be in the family? Because that also has the potential to now cause a lot of drama. What are we saying about executors? So an executor is a person who is appointed by the master of the high court to administer the estate. It can either be an executor or a master representative. It depends on the value of the estate, okay. if it will be a master representative or an executor is appointed. So in terms of your will, you would have nominated an executor. The executor will then have to apply to the master to be appointed. If there is no will or no executor appointed, any interested party can apply to the master to be appointed. It's usually the, the spouse or the next of kin that will apply to, to be appointed as the executor. Um, and then the executor, once appointed, there's quite a bit of roles and responsibilities mm. um, that needs to be fulfilled by the executor. So the executor, once appointed, once they have that letter of appointment, they need to then take control of all of the assets within the estate. They need to make sure that all of the debt is paid of the estate. And then the balance that remains needs to be distributed to the heirs and the property needs to be transferred in line with the wishes of the deceased in line or of his or her will. Then important, when there is no will, we call it then interstate succession that will take place. So that means that you haven't died um, with a will and the interstate succession act will apply. And what does that say? So basically what it means is when you die without a will, um, the provisions of that specific act will apply. And it just basically says who and which heir will um, inherit your assets. So there's a sequence that it will Take and this one is called inter interstate. Interstate. What's the opposite of that? The state. Which is when you do you have, have a, will a will with an executor. And yeah. how does one come by all of this information? Do you just like as an executor, then uh, how do you know the debts that the person has or the properties that they have or what their portfolio looks like? How do you come to the information? 
So that's why going back to the first point, it's really important to to notify all of the relevant parties um, to ensure you know that once you are appointed, that you can make a list of all of the assets and liabilities as the executor. The executor has that responsibility. Um, they will also have to ensure you know that they call on all creditors um, via publishing in the Government Gazette to submit their claims. So there's, there's quite a process that needs to be followed in, in line with the provisions of the Act. So if my, whoever, my husband, let's say, and then now they die, but then they had a secret house like in the Maldives, and, you know, it was really dramatic. And then I only knew about the house in Nisna and the other one in Stellenbosch, but I don't know about the one in the Maldives and Mauritius. Do, do you have to tell me about that house? So the executor will have to ensure, you know, that they take charge of all of the assets. Though. So it's part of the process that they will have to look and, and take charge of all of the assets within the estate and also establish what liabilities or debt the estate does have. What does a family need to know when there's an outstanding amount on a home loan? So when there is an outstanding amount um, on the home loan, firstly, the home loan will have to be settled and cancelled within the deeds office. Alternatively, an heir may also apply to substitute the debtor on the home loan. So basically what happens then, it is subject to affordability. Mm. Um, so the party that wishes to, to take over the loan will have to ensure that there is the necessary affordability. Um, once the endorsement process does take place within the deeds office, uh, the substituting party will then continue with the repayments on the home loan. This is what we call the substitution of data process. Mm. Um, but further to that as well, you know, the executive will have to establish if there's sufficient funds within the estate to settle the outstanding home loan. They will also have to ensure, you know, if there's any insurance or any credit protection that mm. they commence with the insurance claim process to the respective insurance house. So technically, if I can afford the house in Mauritius, then I can just say I want it for myself and then pay it off. And then now the estate can't say that's the estate's house, give it back to everyone else. So it will depend, again, if you have died testate or interstate, as well as in terms of your will, who have you bequeathed the assets to? Um, if you say, you know, the asset needs to, to go to this family member, it's also dependent, you know, if there's an outstanding home loan that falls and, and that portion falls within the estate, the executor will have to settle that home loan. So it's really important, you know, going back to the point of ensuring that there's sufficient estate planning in place. Um, and, and that's why it's really important also, you know, that we recommend that you do seek the or consult with a financial advisor mm -hmm. firstly to understand you know the implications of dying without a will mm -hmm. but also secondly to understand the implications if you will not have sufficient funds to cover your debt or executive fees when you do pass on and so what happened what have you seen happen in those scenarios so unfortunately um you know sometimes in an estate what happens sometimes there won't be sufficient funds mm. within an estate. What the executor then will have to do, if there is a cash shortfall and the heirs cannot pay the cash shortfall, they will then have to unfortunately consider selling some of the assets to pay the debt within the estate. And the other important consideration is as well, you know, if all of the debt exceeds the the value of the assets, mm. um, the executive will then have to administer the estate as insolvent. Okay. So that means that the heirs won't have to pay off that debt? When it's insolvent, then it depends on the applicable legislation, um, either if it's going to be administered in line with the Administration of Estates Act or an Insolvency Act um, in terms of disposal of the asset. All right. Because there's no funds. Before I let you go, what is one of the most common mistakes you wish to not see anymore when it comes to like wrapping up deceased estates and to do specifically with property? For specifically to property, I would recommend, you know, whilst 
you are still alive because death is an inevitable event, do reach out to a financial advisor. Make sure that you have a valid will in place. Make sure that if you have debt, that you have sufficient funds to ensure that your debt is covered when um, you do pass on. Because, you know, unfortunately, it, it leaves a burden on the family mm. um, if, if those things are not taken care of. And Elda, so you would say just do the best thing that you can do to eliminate that sort of burden on the remaining people. Absolutely. And also report the thing within 14 days. You can't wait a year (laughs) and do a year of mourning before you start wrapping things up with this estate. No, absolutely. I think it's important also, you know, because you're going through a a grieving process and you want to make sure, you know, that that is also administered and, and wrapped up. Um, that you do as soon as you are ready to reach out to the nominated executor um, in the deceased world to start with the process. Um, I think it's really important to to ensure that that is done. Have we seen cases where the executor has been challenged? So that is why it's really important to have a valid will where you will have to nominate the executor that you wish to take care of your affairs once you have passed on. So it's really important to ensure that you nominate an executor in your will who you trust that can take care of your affairs um, once you have passed on. Okay. I feel like I'll nominate like five executors in case my first executor, like we were traveling together and then we were in a plane crash and then now no one can find us MH360 vibes. So then now there needs to be someone else in line. Can you do that? Like nominate more than one person? You can nominate more than one executor, yes. Okay. So I'm going to put that in there. I nominate other people in the event that I've died with this other person. Because if it's my spouse, we're dying together. I don't see why we should die separately. Um, Analda, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. This was very informative. I expect we will chat again soon. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. So please come back. We've loved having you. This was very, very informative. And uh, that is where we'll leave it for today. This was the Private Property Podcast brought to you proudly by Private Property. I've had Anelda Kutsia from AMSA tell us about deceased estates. The importance of writing a will and estate planning cannot be understated. We don't know when our day will come. The Lord can come and fetch you immediately with immediate effect. And if you don't have a will, it's going to be a problem for the rest of your family, honey. So get that sorted out is Anelda's point. She didn't use those exact words, <laughs> but I am. Listen, thanks for being here. I'm Sibs, my love, Matiela, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Private Property Podcast. <laughs>